on air. Direct Selling is the first internet TV show that looks at news and information that happens every day in Direct Selling. Because news happens every day, not once a month. Today we have a special guest, Lynn Clement. As we talk about this recent email and news story about supplements and the FDA attacking our industry. Lynn Clements has spent 20 years in direct selling as, let me get this right, as an industry consultant, analyst, consumer activist, a trainer, and is one of only seven expert witnesses considered by the U.S. government whenever a case like this comes about or some sort of trial comes about. So, sit back and relax as we have our discussion with Lynn Clements. All right, everyone, welcome back to On Air. Uh, we have, as I said, a very special guest, Lynn Clements, who is out of Las Vegas. He's the founder of Market Wave. Just so uh, you know, uh, I, we, we've already talked about his credentials, but as one of only seven uh, recognized experts in direct selling who does testify on a number of different cases for the United States, this is why we have him here. But let me just briefly go through why this is such an issue. When the email came to me while I was uh, in Utah from the MLMIA on September 19th, I took a look at it, and just like a number of other companies, just like a number of other media, uh, I got caught with my pants down, not doing the real investigating. That's my fault, something that I should have done, but I'm going to tell you about it uh, right up front. I, I didn't handle it properly. But this is what came uh, on the email. Once again, the Food and Drug Administration, administration has proposed restrictions on the use of nutritional supplements that may go into effect October 1st, 2011, unless sufficient opposition is offered. They go on to say that the assets that it takes to undertake such testing for approval processes, which could only cost in the tens of millions of dollars, is astronomical, and very few companies, particularly those in the vaccine, could handle it. The result would be to eliminate supplement Manufacturers from competition, eyeing direct selling companies uh, per se, and raise the cost of items astronomically. For instance, supplements now that may cost $50 would, in effect, go up to around $250, $500. Some would be financially out of control. And if you could just imagine, as a distributor, you would have a very rough time paying for and purchasing these items uh, just as your consumers are. So, as I said, we have Lynn here. Lynn, what, what is, is, is your thoughts on all this? Because I know you have a very different take on all of this. Yes, well, thank you, Keeper. I appreciate the opportunity to kind of give everybody the other side of this. Uh, actually, the, um, none of this is true. This is what I call the, the kind of the chicken little effect. Some of the boomers may remember that story uh, where mm -hmm. the term the sky is falling came from. Uh, and we're constantly being told the MLM sky is falling or the dietary supplement industry is, and, and, and on the sky always stays right where it is when this is all over. Uh, this is just what they call draft guidance. Uh, the the, the Deche was passed back in 1994 that said any new dietary ingredient, dietary supplement ingredient, that was added to the market since then in the last 17 years, you've got to show to the FDA that it's safe. Not okay. that it works, just that it's safe. Okay. Um, anything before October 15, 94 is grandfathered in. If it was in the food supply before then, and you haven't chemically adulterated it in some way, it's exempt. So the vast majority of stuff already out there, including all the juices, by the way, will all be exempt. These DNI, new dietary ingredient notifications, will not be necessary. But even if they are, what the FDA has said, look, ever since the shave was passed, you've been begging us for some more guidance. Only 700 of these DNIs have come in. There's 55,600 new dietary ingredients since then. So. Um, Clearly, you, you, you know, we, we hear you. You want more guidance. You say it's too ambiguous. We need more detail about what's an NDI, what do we need to send you, whatever. Okay. Industry. Well, Lynn, let me ask you this. Lynn, let me ask you this. The person who sent this out is a Dr. Alan Sozin, and he's from the Institute of Progressive Medicine. Why is it that you think someone like that, a doctor, would send out something like this? And it's something that we're going to get into in the next segment, the whole fear thing, but why do you think he would send something out like this. You know, again, I'm not a mind reader, and I certainly don't want to ever do anything to go against his ethics. I don't know him personally. Mm -hmm. I did not read his article. I read the MLMIA's interpretation of his article. But he's one of, of what are hundreds of, of people out there of authority making this claim. It is my theory that a few people, uh, kind of conspiracy theorist sort of people, kind of put all this out there, all this fear tactic kind of stuff, 
mm-hmm. and then it just it just it just propagated. It geometrically progressed as everyone mm-hmm. read everybody else's interpretation of it. And of course, bad news always gets worse and gets greater and faster. And no one's ever actually going back and just simply reading the draft guidance to see what they're actually talking about. Okay. Um, in our next segment, which we'll be getting to in about 30 seconds, I want to talk about this fear thing that you just touched on. Because I think it's really important that everyone understand it. So when we come back, Lynn's going to talk about the whole fear behind these types of passages. Thanks a lot, uh, Lynn. Everyone, hold on. Here's a deodorant called Axe. Spray it under your arms and across your chest to stay fresh all day. I know you're not touching my mannequin. Axe, the smell the ladies love. Here's a deodorant called Axe. Spray it under your arms and across your chest to stay fresh all day. Okay, everyone, welcome back to On Air with Keeper. As I said, we have special guest Lynn Clemens, one of the premier experts in direct selling. He's been in the industry for 20 years as a consultant, an analyst, consumer advocate, one of the top trainers. And as I said in our first segment, he's one of only seven industry uh, expert witnesses that the government calls on whenever they need to get into some heavy-duty um, legal cases. Lynn, you talked about something early, rather late, in that very last segment. I want to make sure that everyone understands it. The whole fear factor behind all of this. Direct Summit Live, like I said, we got caught with our pants down. And we didn't do the investigating that we should have done. The MLMIA, one of the more trusted associations, did the same thing. Uh, Network Marketing Business Journal, in their latest edition, on their front cover, is talking about everyone get behind this. Otherwise, as you said, the chicken little theory is going to happen. The sky is going to fall in. And, of course, the Association of Network Marketing Professional professionals is almost touting this as as law uh what do you have to say well again i i in, in their defense i think what they're probably doing is they're going online and they're googling this and they're reading this this to tsunami of of stuff coming out of the dietary supplement industry uh, where they're making all of these claims and they're just going well it must be true we need to get out there and take action instead of going again just going back straight to the source and reading the, the draft guidance and seeing what's really involved looking at historical precedent like another understand what what the FAA is doing here they've had the ability to do for 17 years nothing's changed right um, and and we go back over the last 17 years and we look at all of the NDIs that have already come in well are they just sort of obligatorily not accepting them because you know they're in the hip pocket of the pharmaceutical industry well no um, from 95 to 05 I've checked there's 145 of them came in and they dismissed and rejected six Six out of 145. Wow. And by the way, one of them that they rejected was commonly referred to as the date rape drug. So these are good reasons why they wow. rejected them. Well, then I did like you. I went back and I read the proposed guidelines. I think that's really what's key here. Proposed guidelines. I, I was speaking to you earlier this week, and if I understood you correctly, a lot of direct selling companies are already aware of the guidelines. They already follow a lot of these guidelines. So I'm not understanding, and I think we need to put to rest for a lot of people, the fear behind this is not warranted. Right. I think I, what happens is I think there are people out there that they want to be heroes. Mm. You know, or in some cases, they even say, send us money so we can go fight the government. And people have sent them yes. thousands of dollars yes. for these unwarranted kind of attacks. But my concern is that what happens is, is you have all these chicken littles that are constantly crying wolf, and they're making all of us lame ducks. Because think about this, why would we want to build an organization in an industry that we keep getting told is constantly under attack by our government, that's constantly you know, in, in jeopardy of being shut down? Um, and that, that, I don't think that, that's very healthy for our industry, especially when there's no need for this type of paranoia. And we keep getting it almost an average of once a year. It was, it was the new business opportunity rule. It was Codex. It was Waxman sticking in that regulation into some FTC a legislation that was supposed to destroy the dietary supplement industry. And then there was, oh, there's two or three others, like, you know, that were out there. And every single time we're told the sky is falling, it doesn't fall, and everything goes on just the way it Lynn, ever was. we kind of lost you. I think we had a, 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 a line break. But let me back up to where we were. And we, we've got about a minute, a minute and a half, where we're talking about the fear factor in, in all of this. Um, and you were talking about the sky is, is falling. If you don't mind, just kind of uh, jump on that again. Yeah, I'm saying that it, 
it makes all of us kind of like afraid to build our businesses and like you know what's the use in doing it yeah yes. shut down and and um, and we look at it throughout history all these different times we've been told this uh, from the new business opportunity rule to codex to, to all of these different times that we've been told oh get out there and you know raise our arms and scream and send all these letters to, to our congressmen and protect our industry and send us money so we can help you do it and then nothing happened so what you're saying is that there really shouldn't be this fear because I can see it as distributors being fearful who then put pressures on companies or are calling their companies saying what is going on it puts the companies in an awkward spot consumers of the product start to wonder what is going on and you're saying this should not be the state uh, of uh, of the distributor's mind at this point. There's nothing to worry about. Let's suspend all logic and reason and common sense for a moment and just assume the FDA, like the FTC before them, really does have an ulterior motive to destroy this growing health and nutrition industry Yeah. Uh, you know that provided $28 billion in taxable sales last year. That's just a dietary supplement. Health and nutrition, $117 billion. Generated over a, it was generated from over 150 million consumers that, and it directly employs 200,000 American taxpayers. They're going to destroy all of that in this economy in the election cycle. Wow. I and hear let's you. assume all of that isn't true. All that's wow. Actually true. That's an excellent um, point. You know, that, I mean, that you, that you got to just use some common sense here. Besides, in the fall, if it was true, why did the FDA just extend the comment period to get our feedback on this new guidance another wow. 60 days? It's yeah. December uh, 3rd now, by the way. Right. That they're, they're going to finalize this. So, um, and again, it's just guidance. It's just their suggestions. It, there's no statutes. There's no regulation. There's no legislation. There's no law. There's nothing involved with that. It's just their thinking on the topic. They're giving people more guidance about what's a DNI, when you should send it, what you should send us, etc. Wow, Lynn, that's very, very good information, very insightful. Listen, uh, unfortunately our segment is over right now, but we are definitely going to be having you back uh, quite often over the next six or seven weeks. We have already reached out to some of the other principals who have uh, been somehow uh, affected, such as uh, the uh, Association of Network Marketing Professionals, Network Marketing Business Journal. We've contacted Dr. Alan Sozin's office to see if they have any comment on this, because this is going to be a very big story over the next uh, seven to nine months, and we definitely want you to come back and spend even more time talking about this and helping to calm some of the fears that will no doubt be growing after this particular uh, article. Uh, appear on the front page of Network Marketing Business Journal. Thanks again, Lynn. All right, thank you. Here's a deodorant called Axe. Spray it under your arms and across your chest to stay fresh all day. I know you're not touching my mannequin. Axe, the smell the ladies love. Hi, this is Keeper, and welcome back to On Air. As you can see, much has changed since the last segment. I had to stop, I had to take a break, my elbow, my right elbow with this trusty purple cast on was just giving me a lot of trouble. Went to the doctor, the doctor said you need to stop, you need to relax, we need to get a cast on that deep bone bruise on your right elbow so you'll stop moving that part of your arm. So there you have it, I'm in an el elbow cast and I get to start back with on air. This is the finishing up of the very first segment. Tomorrow's segment, just so you know, we're going to be looking at direct selling media, the magazines that are in direct selling. Are they really news or are they glorified training magazines? Or as my good friend Randy Gage would say, are they just magalogs? Let me just answer a question really fast. I've been asked, Keeper, why would you even attempt to do a daily news show on direct selling? I happen to believe that news and direct selling happens every day, not once a month, like our magazines and newspapers uh, actually report on. I happen to think that this is a time when direct selling needs to get involved in any and everything that impacts the world, be it social issues, political issues, civic issues, education, you name it. We need to have a foothold in these uh, uh, arenas. And so that's why I am going to do a daily show. I'm going to look to bring you news from the world of direct selling that impacts your business and news outside of direct selling that impacts your business. Because news happens every day, not once a month, and I'm going to do my best to bring it to you. Have a good day. See you tomorrow.